Welcome to Troubleshooting a Troublesome Mac, when bad things happen to good computers. I'm Dan LaRock from Up Your Media. The following is from a presentation I gave to the Parksville Qualicum Mac Users Group. The first step in dealing with an ailing Apple computer is, don't panic. You keep regular backups, don't you? And if you don't, today would be a good day to start. Looking at the Mac OS X troubleshooting flowchart, we can see that we start by identifying the issue and probing the issue verifying the issue, reducing the complexity by removing all peripherals, by doing some research, we try quick fixes, use diagnostics, isolate the problem, remove the preferences, reinstall the operating system, and reset the firmware. When troubleshooting video and power issues, including no boot chime, no fan noise, no hard drive noises, or no response, first we reset the SMC, or System Management Controller. The SMC is responsible for many low-level functions on Intel-based Macs, including the power button, lid opening and closing on portable Macs, battery management, ambient light sensing, and others. To reset the SMC on your Intel Mac, for your Mac Portable that's experiencing power and video issues, first you unplug the MagSafe power adapter and the wall power socket for several seconds, and shut down the Mac. Physically remove and reinsert the battery if it's removable and start up the Mac again. Another good troubleshooting step we have is resetting the PRAM or the NVRAM. It's not necessary to know what they mean, just to know that some of the information that is stored in this memory may include speaker volume, screen resolution, and especially startup disk selection. You may need to reset the NVRAM or PRAM if you experience issues related to these functions. To reset the PRAM and NVRAM, shut down the computer, locate the following keys on the keyboard. Command, Option, P, and R. You'll need to hold these keys down simultaneously in step four. Turn on the computer, then quickly press and hold the Command, Option, P, and R keys. You must press this key combination before the gray screen appears. Hold the keys down until the computer restarts and you hear the startup sound for the second time. Then release the keys. <laughs> Oh yes, this can make you blue. This symptom, a boot sequence that stalls on blue or gray screen, begins to suggest hard drive and or software issues. It can also mean logic board or even a faulty optical drive cable. Try starting up with the operating system disk that came with the computer. Shut down the stalled machine, insert the disk, and start again, holding down the C key. If your hard drive fails to mount on your desktop or appear in your system profiler, you've just diagnosed a dead hard drive. Here's another great troubleshooting and repair tool included in your Apple operating system. Disk Utility. If your hard drive does appear, you can find the Disk Utility in your Utilities menu within your Applications folder. Now again, one of your applications may become unresponsive. Luckily, this doesn't affect your entire system, and you can exit the program without affecting the rest of your computer. To force quit any particular application, go to the Apple menu and choose Force Quit, or press Command, Option, and Escape, or press Option and click on the unresponsive application in the dock. For suspected software and preference problems, it's wise practice to add a spare user account. If the program or function acts differently in this new user account, the fault lies somewhere in the permissions or preferences of your home user. A fresh, new user account gives you a clean, new, untouched set of user preferences to work with in Troubleshoot. It resets all applications to default, in case I have a bad set of preferences, and it also rules out any corrupted user preferences. Target Disk Mode is another tool you can use to troubleshoot an unresponsive computer, but it requires another Mac computer with a FireWire input. To use FireWire Target Disk Mode, make sure that the target computer is turned off. And by target computer, I mean the computer that you're trying to troubleshoot. If you're using an Apple portable computer, such as a PowerBook or a MacBook, as a target computer, plug in its AC power adapter. Use a FireWire cable to connect the target computer to a host computer, and the host computer can be powered on. Start up the target computer and immediately press and hold down the T key until the FireWire icon appears. The hard disk of the target computer should become available to the host computer and will likely appear on the desktop. When you are finished copying files, locate the target computer's hard disk icon on the desktop of the host computer, and drag it to the trash, or choose eject or put away from the file menu. 
If your operating system and or its preferences have become corrupted beyond repair, archive and install is probably your next best option. It should not delete or modify your important data, but you should always back up your important files nonetheless. Start up with your disk and go to the install dialog. You can choose to archive and install within that dialog in the older Leopard systems. In Snow Leopard, it does it automatically. There are a few various ways to perform preventive maintenance on your Mac computer, including software updates, repairing your permissions, in the way that you transport your notebooks, and how you back up and repair your preferences. You can feel free to clear your caches every now and again. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Up Your Media's Web and Tech video blog. I look forward to sharing more Mac tips and tricks with you in the near future.